Hey buddy. I'm sorry, but you can't really live with us. You can go. No, the other way. Yeah, there, come. Go out, go out. Sorry, buddy. Basically, we're writing the book of doing up this, uh, this place, doing up this property here in France. And a book has many chapters, and then the chapter we're working on right now is the bathroom. I want to have the bathroom finished. The bathroom is going to be in that building behind me. But it is a very long chapter, so the bathroom chapter gets sub-chapters. And this is necessary because there's many things that I need to do in order to complete the bathroom. For instance, the cellar had to be done, prepared, uh, renovated because all the plumbing of the bathroom is going to originate from there or exit the property from there. Now, another thing that I need to do for the bathroom is basically um, replacing or reinforcing this wooden wall. This wooden wall that we have set up in the beginning of this year is, I, I think, not strong enough. It's holding a height of six feet, one, one meter 80 of, of, of dirt behind it. And there's gonna be a lot of weight on here because I will have to walk in here. And later I'm planning installing stone steps there so that from the roof terrace, you can access the garden via this path behind me. Now, these stone steps there are gonna be really heavy and uh, I, I, I just don't trust um, these wooden planks to hold up all that weight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a stone wall in front of it. I'm going to leave I'm going to leave the wood there as it is. There's no there's no reason to remove it. I am just going to uh, build a stone concrete wall in front of it to double it up. That will have as a fact that this wall is going to be a lot sturdy, more sturdy for the long term. And also I am going to stabilize this wall a bit. This wall wouldn't be able to come further in this direction if I just reinforce the whole area here. Wasn't planning on doing this in the beginning, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's, that's just the smartest uh, approach. So what I need to do now is remove all the gravel and uh, dig in these uh, pop banks, fill them up with concrete, rebar in it and sort of build a form where I can uh, mason the, the natural stones, the ones there, uh, against and then fill behind it, back fill that with concrete. That's the easiest way, is just having a form, a plank standing up and then I am placing uh, stones against that plank in the back, uh, slap on a bit of uh, white cement mortar and then uh, fill the back up with rubble and, uh, and concrete. So yeah, that's uh, one job I have on the list for this week. Well, that's, that's going to be a more more than this week, but uh, yeah, it needs to be done. I will regret it later if I don't do that. So let's just get started. So I've got my uh, pipe bangs in place. This channel is deep enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's deep enough. And I got some uh, reed bar thrown in there, angles and straight ups. Uh, I, I know it looks crooked, but uh, and it is crooked, but it does not really matter. It's, this is gonna be a, you know, a wall 20 centimeters. 
what's that, uh, 10, uh, 7, 8 inches thick concrete, plus then, yeah, the stones in the front. That's, it's, this is gonna be strong. This is gonna be a very strong footer. I mean, of course, when you're building this, you always gotta think about the forces that are exerted on, you know, your structure, and the forces are gonna be pushing this way. But um, as long as this footer is heavy enough, large enough, and the connection between the concrete wall and the footer is strong enough, you know, it, it, it can't really push it that way. So uh, I'm, yeah, I'm very, uh, I'm quite sure that this is uh, really strong enough. Oh, I just put in some more rebar. I, I've got it laying around anyway, it's cheap. Yeah, I'll put in some more just for good measure. Yeah, that, uh, that will be fine. That will be uh, strong enough. That's a pretty, pretty decent foundation. So that's been curing now for overnight. It's not fully cured, but it's uh, hard. We can start working on it. Plenty of rebar. Yeah, almost all the way up to the top. I think the wall is gonna be uh, a little yeah, same with the rest of the garden upstairs. So I'm gonna cut a plank, put a plank here as a sort of a form. And then I'm going to mason in the stones, the natural stones from the backside. Fill the void up with concrete and rubble and all kinds of stuff that I find here. And then after that has sort of set-ish, I'll take out the form. And then I have a fairly smooth wall of natural stone, visible to the eye. And then I will grout it with uh, mortar, with a mixture, a mortar mixture of the old lime that I'm recovering from taking down part of this building and white cement. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get it up. I hope to do this in three days. Yeah. The height of my form will be about 60 centimeter, two feet, because I can still work behind it. It's not too high. And uh, we need to go about uh, six feet up. So that's uh, three days. Yeah, we can do this. So we can have this done before the weekend, hopefully. Let's get started. in the basement time to uh, get some electricity going in here and the very first thing I want to install is uh, are these uh, two by two feet large LED ceiling lights um, what I'm gonna do is very simple I'm just gonna glue them to the ceiling they are very light and I've got a very good glue. This is, I'm not sure. I think it's only sold in Holland. It's called Polymax. And yeah, once you have this on, you, you'll, you'll never get it off anymore. So I'm just gonna, I've got three of these lights. Well, that's the entrance. There's usually light coming in. 
So thinking about this corner, this corner, and then that corner, and um, and that should be su uh, sufficient. So uh, yeah, just gonna stick them on the ceiling, and then uh, probably tomorrow I'll start installing uh, the wiring. Yeah, let this uh, let this sit overnight, and then uh, oh, this is going to be nicely lit up. That's for sure, and that's what we need. Yeah, especially with all the uh, technical equipment that I need to install here: water heater, plumbing, wastewater going out. I need to spend quite a bit of time working here, and later it's just important that all these dark. Spaces are properly lit up. So I just got the excess uh, cement off and then later we'll start grouting, uh, yeah, just splashing on cement and brushing, etc, etc. But uh, I want to leave it for the, like this for now, gonna work on the, the second layer. Well, all the excess cement I'm going to uh, yeah, tumble in the cement mixer until it falls apart and becomes sand again or small particles and then we reuse it again. I just keep reusing it. Once a week I am approached by companies who want to send me their stuff for free to try out and to uh, include in the videos, obviously as a form of advertising. 
rarely that there's a product that's really relevant to the channel so i usually politely decline but this time i got the product that i was actually about to buy i was about to buy an automatic chicken coop opening door reason being is that at this moment i have to get up at sunrise to open the door for the boys and i have to uh, close at night uh, the gate the the door for 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 the boys when they go in there on their roosting sticks now uh, of course i i like spending time on the chickens that's not a problem but sometimes i'd like to sleep in and also sometimes i'd like to be away for a night you know take the camper van and, and go hiking somewhere and camp out um, also soon in a couple of weeks i'll be going for a week i'll be leaving them for a week and someone here from the village will take care of them but it's a bit much to ask him to come at sunrise and at sundown to help him with the door so therefore i really wanted to have this automatic chicken coop opening door i got it today the chick cozy opening door it's a bit different than most of them most of them open um, vertically this one has two doors that open horizontally um, and further it has everything that i want it has a protection from closing while there's a chicken say halfway in the door and uh, you can set it to time and you can set it to light so when it gets dark it'll close and when it becomes light they open um, that's basically all I really wanted. So today I am going to uh, completely revamp the chicken coop. The, I'm going to insulate the chicken coop. I am going to remove a lot of the fencing and close it off with wood because I want to winterize the chicken coop. Maybe later there's going to be a heating element installed in it to keep it at a acceptable temperature during the winter. I am going to install this chicken coop opening door. Oh, and I'm going to install a little camera in uh, their sleeping quarters just to uh, make sure that when i'm away i can check on whether they were inside when the doors closed if they happen to lock themselves out then i can call my neighbor and he will come uh, and help them out but it's nice for me to, uh, to to be able to see what's going on while i'm not here so let's uh, let's get started That's really super simple. I just have to close the doors and then uh, the screw holes in the panel below and I screw it in. That's really simple. So I should install the batteries to close the doors. I presume. Oh no. Yeah, it's just screwing that in. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's a battery compartment. I'm really happy that they also provided the batteries. I don't have to run to the shop. Yeah. Uh, Chico Z told me not to install it too low and ob obviously it's because the doors need to slide on this bottom track as well as the upper track and they don't want dirt to fall into the uh, bottom track so but this is this is about high enough That's gonna be my uh, the door opening. Super, super simple installation.
got a little spy camera that I mount into the nesting box so that I can see that, uh, that they're safely inside and I can also sort of see what they're doing just because I'm interested. So I'm finished now, finished for this week. What I've done is I have positioned the coop onto a plank, a plank that I have treated against water, against moisture. This is set on top of thick styrofoam, so the cold in the winter from the ground doesn't move up into the coop. All sides are closed off. I have plexiglass here and here, and the rest is all wood. I've just taped some blue stuff here, blue tape, um, in case the, the chooks can't see that it's plexiglass and try to go in through that normal opening but that's just temporary then the automatic door is installed and now the coop is apart from ventilation holes is completely closed uh, for predators so that means that they can move freely in the whole coop 24 hours a day um, before I had a little gate shut here so that they were confined the roosting post the the nest boxes but uh, that door is now open all the time and they can move around and later we will put the food inside here and also the water so that if they get up in the middle of the night and they want to drink something they can do that and further it is better insulated because i think in the winter i want to install a little uh, coop heater maybe from the same brand chicken cozy they also have a little coop heater i saw what's left to do is program the uh, auto door you can set it to close at set times you can manually close it and you can have it closing when it becomes dark uh, i don't want that because when big clouds move in before the rain it becomes dark and then the doors might close while the chicks actually need to move inside to, to hide from the rain. So I'm just going to uh, set it at certain times and adjust it uh, throughout the season. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, really I'm really pleased with that, uh, with that door actually, so far. Super, super easy installation, couldn't have been easier. Yeah, let's see how it works over the coming weeks. But uh, yeah, I'll put a link in the description below if you are interested in uh, in one, have a look. They have them in yellow and in green. And uh, yeah, so far I'm really happy with it, but uh, time will tell. I want to thank you all for watching, for liking, for subscribing. A very, very, very special thanks to the people who have supported this channel by buying me a coffee uh, the last week. If you also want to support the channel and donate a coffee, then see the link below or in the description. And then next week, I'll see you. We're going to continue uh, the never ending job of breaking down the bathroom wall, uh, working on the electrics in the basement. And I don't know what else, but that's, that's becoming, oh yeah, finishing that little wall that I'm building. Yeah, th these are becoming priorities. I need to move on with those. Not really my favorite jobs, but anyway, see you next week.